Let's start. Thank you for being here again. Actually, I was a little scared at walking and there was a lot of those people, but now we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> so, I'm assuming you all got a chance to read chapter three or four, right? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You have an idea what it's about? Yeah. Yeah, yes. who does, man? Okay, cool. So, this to me is chapter three faith, which the way how Napoleon Hill uh, described is like applied faith. It's not just faith, but it's applied faith. And it's a little bit different than uh, the religious, you know, idea that we all have faith. A lot of people relate faith greatly to a religious cause or something, right? Faith and belief in God and, you know. Uh, it's true, but, uh, but faith, really, we all have it. We just either have it developed or we, it's dormant. So to me, this, I live my life like this, and it's like the most important chapter of all. Uh, because you're gonna go and do all the other things, right? You're gonna get your, your goals, you're gonna have your statements that you read every morning. All those are things that we do, and they're practical things, and you just do it. But after doing it for a while, you know, shit's gonna happen, and things are not gonna work out the way they, that you want it to work out, and this and that, and what the one thing is gonna keep it together it's faith, because there's three steps, right? There's like, uh, you ask for what you want, you have the idea of what you want, you have a clear, you know, uh, goal, and after you do that, you know, you, it's gonna take a period of time, things don't happen like right away, right? And it's in that period of time, especially for, for us, you know, escrows, you know, I mean, sometimes happen, sometimes they don't happen, sometimes you're working really hard and you haven't put a few in escrow for two, three months, and the one thing that keeps us together is the faith that's going to happen, and it's going to happen at the right time. I mean, I'm going to read you a statement that I heard in a tape that I was listening from The Rock that I thought it was so good uh, that I brought it up and I want to share with you. So, have faith that the one thing you wanted so bad to happen oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. Sometimes we're so stuck on something that we want to happen so bad, it's like looking at that door and that closes that we're not really paying attention and all the other doors are open around us. So, you know, I, I mentioned this and I know I told James, this, James Harris, who said it at the, at, the, at the event that we had in the forum, you can have faith and fear at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. It's like trying to put oil and water in a cup and mix it. Right? It just doesn't work that way because you have a goal and you have faith that that's going to happen and you have your, even you're working really hard for it, you can doubt that it's not going to happen because then it's like being scared of failure, right? You can succeed without failing. You need to fail in order to succeed. And if you're not failing, that means you're not even trying. Right? It's part of the game. You fail more than, and we talked about this briefly about it some last, last week, and you know, I did a thousand experiments and we failed just to find out that the thousand and one was the one that called the light bulb, right? So, uh, so faith is a super important thing. I think we all need to work on that, especially in this business. Uh, you know, we need to believe that we're going to sell houses and we're going to get these things. As long as we're working really hard for it, right? So, but let's read the definition of, according to this book, of what really faith is, right? So, faith is a state of mind which might be induced or created by affirmation or repeated instructions to the subconscious mind to the principle of auto suggestion, which is the next chapter. So, these two chapters are, you know, basically tied to each other. Uh, to develop faith, you need to help to suggest yourself, and uh, we're going to talk about how you do that. But, you know, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So it's important for us to work on that, and, and how do we work on that? So let's, let's repeat ourselves, affirmations, right? You know, we talk about the incantations and the affirmations and everything we do. So you need to find your own, and one of the things that helped me a lot in the beginning, because I'm, I'm more like a listener than a, than a reader, uh, that's why I do a lot of audio books as opposed to reading the books, uh, I used to record myself on things that I wanted to hear me saying, and then I would play it over and over again. So you have your iPhone, you have a microphone in there, 
and just repeat all the suggestions that you want to hear. I'm going to do this, I'm going to achieve this by December, I'm going to do that, I'm going to feel this way, I'm going to uh, whatever it is, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, I'm going to gain 10 pounds, or whatever your goal is, and just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, and then just play it. And then you can go on a run, and you listen, if you don't feel like yelling and like me, <laughs> then you can do that, that's a good option to, to suggest yourself, by like hearing yourself say it, okay? In connection with this, consider again the statement that all thoughts have been emotionalized by a given feeling. And mixed with faith, they immediate, begin immediately to translate themselves into the physical equivalent of counterpart. So, with, let me, let me hold that here for a second. The three strongest emotions that we have, and uh, again, you know, this is being done by a but an expert, and this, the strongest emotions we have are faith, love, and sex. So those are the three things that us as human beings, just by nature, by, you know, how we are made, those are the three strongest ones. Sex, love, and faith. Does that make sense to you guys? Or do you think of any other one that would be a stronger emotion than that? I'm talking about positive emotions. So talk about anger and, and all the bad ones, right? There's a scale of emotions where like anger and all the bad stuff is down here and we, we want to be up here, okay? So, uh, and by the way, a positive thought has a lot more power than negative thoughts. Because we have these negative thoughts that come to us all the time. You need to catch them, you need to keep, you don't need to block it, right? So you need to just be conscious about it, like you're driving and someone's in front of you going slow and you want to bitch about it or something bad and you just acknowledge that's happening the reason why that, that's happening, maybe he's slowing down for you to get to 26th street, street faster because you're going to be crashed by a semi-truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever thought about that? Mm -hmm. So instead of getting upset, work on, oh, maybe there's a reason why it's happening and then you feel good about yourself and you move on and then you change that vibration to more positive things. So the trick is to that, again, is habituate your life and this becomes a lifestyle where you're catching yourself and you're getting better and yes, you're not going to make mistakes, you're going to get negative and I get upset all the time and I, I, I continue to work on it, I continue to work on it, it's a constant work that you need to do and it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier but it will always be work, it's not like you're going to reach a point where you're going to be like your mind's only positive and everything's perfect and uh, you're done, it doesn't work that way. So when you mix these three emotions, love, faith, and, and, uh, and sex, there is a, a cause and effect called coloring, right? Have you read that portion of it? Anyone has any comments on that? The what? Coloring, it's in the very beginning. It says, the emotions of faith, love, and sex are the most powerful of all major positive emotions. When the three are blended, they have the effect of coloring. You see it? Yes. So what happens is when you when you have faith that when you like really believe that something's gonna happen and you're in that state of mind for most of the time, the universe is gonna find the fastest way to deliver you to that point. It's gonna introduce you, you're gonna meet the right person, and you're gonna be in the right mood at the right time, someone's gonna walk in an open house and you're gonna be in, you know, in alignment with yourself and uh, they're gonna connect with you and that person is, you know, married to a guy that you've been wanting to you know, crazy shit like that happens all the time to me, and it's because of that, it's because, you know, you are constantly looking on the positive, on the opportunity, why didn't it happen, I get upset, and then I'm like, well, maybe something, because, and the, there's another book that I told you, uh, The Science of Getting Rich, it talks about the, the, polar, uh, the, the polarity law. Which it talks about for every positive, there's a negative, for every negative, there's a positive. So you need to use that law in your favor, right? Don't, and what we do most of the time, which is, which is sad, is that we have like a thermostat between us, right? We, we're doing good, right? And we close to this cross, and then we got a listing, and we're like super excited that we're getting so happy, and we're like, oh, something bad's gonna happen now. <laughs> Don't you do that? I do that all the time. I do it less now, but you can now sabotage yourself. It's like, you know, the, the thermostat for air condition is set at 70, and when it goes to 71, what happens? Automatically kicks in and starts blowing, right? 
same thing. So we kind of out the sabotage. We feel like we're doing good and instead we embrace it and be good, we almost call that something bad's gonna happen. That's the polarity, right? So let's don't do that and let's use it in the different direction, right? Let's, something bad happens, like, okay, what good is gonna come out of this? And just start looking immediately. And that will strengthen your faith, okay? Uh, so here it is. The subconscious mind, which you're gonna have to suggest, and you're gonna develop faith, so your subconscious mind is gonna make sure that you have stronger faith, will transmute into physical equivalent by the most direct and practical media available. Any order which is given to the given to it in a state of belief or faith, that the order will be carried out. Surely enough has been stated to give a starting point from which one might thought experiment and practice acquired ability to mix faith with any other given subconscious mind. Perfection will come to practice. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you habituate yourself and you do it over and over and over and over again. Anyone has any comments so far? Or want to add something into this? Anyone has applied this principle in their lives? No? Too early to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, because it's something that I've always tried to focus on, it's like building a muscle. You know, and, uh, the more you do it, the stronger you feel, the easier you can pass those negative thoughts. Uh, so I really think you need to look at it like a muscle to you. Um, and that if you don't use it for a while or if you get too negative for a period of time, then you go back and you realize that muscle's been weakened. Um, so that's kind of how I kind of view it. Right, exactly. So, yes. I was just going to say, I also feel like it helps when you surround yourself with people in the like mind. If you keep people who are negative or like pessimistic around you, it's hard to always like find the positive out of things. So it helps to kind of like be, keep, you know, you are who you yoke with. So like it helps to keep positive minded people too around you because then as you're learning and to build that muscle, they're doing it too. So it's almost like they'll catch you if you use the, you know, the wrong word and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Tony Robbins says proximity is power, right? Uh, and we become the average of people we, we hang out the most with. So, I said this in many classes before, and I'm gonna say it again, and again, if you don't agree with this, don't do it, but I got a point in time in my life where I had to stop being friends with people that I was friends, that I didn't feel that they were in the same mindset that I was, or the same, you know, vibe that I was, because I was fighting really hard to try to get into this vibration, and then, Good friends, right? Friends from school, from, uh, from when I was a kid and all that, because it's just, I kept going back in there and they keep dragging me to that thing and I just didn't feel that that's something that I wanted to do anymore. Mm -hmm. So I found a way how to like hang out less with those people or talk to less with them. Uh, if I felt like watching a TV show got me in this state that uh, I was like angry or whatever, I stopped watching that. Just every single thing makes a difference. And there's a chapter in here we're gonna cover I think it's like one of the last ones, it's called the mastermind group, and that's basically what you're talking about. This, this is a mastermind group, right? And that chapter is gonna tell us to make groups of four or five people, but it's just too much, we barely have the time to come to this class. So we use this as our mastermind group, and we'll cover that when we get there, but you're absolutely right. It's like, if you're with people that are wanting to do the same thing, it's easier for you not to fall out of that thought because then you're going to be talking to someone and they're into it and that what we want to do and I'm going to ask you to do and we can start doing it today is find someone in here but find it because I'm not going to want to pair you with someone because you're not going to find just find someone that you can check maybe two times a week I'm not going to say every day it's not going to happen but maybe two times a week that you feel like oh I've been doing this and it's not working call that person and be like what should I do and kind of support each other I think it's really cool we did that before right and it works, right? You find your accountability partner, and then you just talk about this chapter, or talk about anything that is not working out for you. And that's how we support each other, and we, you know, it's important, I think, so thanks for that. Yes? Um, I, I, regarding this whole phase chapter, I feel like sometimes when, for me at least, when I know, like, consciously that I'm in a place of, like, awareness and of, of growth, that uh, I don't know if this happens to anybody, but you know, in a way, like I can't isolate myself in a way, you know, because 
I know in that frequency that I'm in, like I'm just like hammering it out. Um, whether it is like listening to anxiety into like books and things like that or certain things. But um, I'm just kind of this it's just me here. happens to other people. No, I think I think it happens, and uh, that's because by nature most people are not in that vibration. You know, uh, the default setting is to be negative and to be scared and to have fear. That's by default. So the majority of people are not even aware of that, right? So for us, that we at least become conscious about it. Once you become conscious and you are aware of it, now you're gonna start seeing things that you didn't see. You're gonna start, you know. It becomes like something, oh shit, I, I didn't realize I was so fucking negative. I didn't realize I was so grumpy. I didn't realize, you know, you start like, why, why am I doing it? Why? Because you've been doing that for many years and that's by default what you do. It's so by nature, you will be doing that. Our brain is basically programmed to protect us, right? To survive. That's the job. Like, Everything, like from the chemicals that get released and everything. If you're in a very cold weather, your brain's gonna send blood to your organs to keep them alive for the longest. Like everything in us is programmed to survive. So your brain is always trying to tell you not to do something that is scary because it's trying to protect you. Uh, you know, and, and that's when the conflict becomes, you know, like you're trying to do that. You're like, I'm gonna have this goal and I have faith when it's gonna happen. And your brain is like, you shouldn't do that because if you do that, you're gonna, you know, lose your money or you're gonna lose only bet or whatever it is, right? I'm not saying like just have faith and put all your money in the stock market and have the faith that's gonna happen. I'm not talking about that kind of crazy <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> but it's important that you start training yourself to go to the other side. And yes, you're gonna catch yourself sometimes that it's better to be alone sometimes. Like when I, uh, I invited a lot of you guys to come with me on the Friday runs and jump in the ocean at six in the morning, and only two people show up in five years. <laughs> right? Uh, one was uh, Andre, and the other one was um, Stefan. 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 Yes. And one of the things I love about Stefan is that he was very respectful, and he said, "I'd love to come with you again, but I get that this might be your thing." So you let me know when you want me to come and I'll come. And I say thank you because I was actually thinking about that, that I love that you came with me and I love doing it with you or with any of you guys. But at the same time, I also enjoy me being alone and doing my thing out there just by myself. So if you learn how to enjoy yourself, I think it's, it's important, you know? Good? Yes. So when it says mixed with emotions, right? Like you have something like, we need to move ourselves, you know, like, you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins and I like how he talks about, like, in order to get things going, you need to, you know, have energy and good action and, and get your body, in, you know, in a, in a different vibration, right? And how you get there, there's different things that we can use, different rules. Music, to me, is like one of the biggest ones, right? You go to the gym, you put that music, it gets you excited, you crank it up more than if you are going to the gym and they're playing some dumb song, right? Uh, Go on a run, you listen to something that motivates you. I mean, I don't know, whatever it is that motivates you, you know? So, uh, I was doing a deal um, two years ago, a big deal, and it was very complicated. And some of you know what it is, I'm not, but I'm not gonna say in camera because I signed an NDA. But I was very, it was, it was a very difficult deal, and it almost didn't happen two times, but literally it almost didn't happen. And from like, what I couldn't just say, it's, I don't know how it's not going to happen. It was just stuff that they were asking that it was impossible uh, and all these things to literally taking a run on the beach by myself and trying to get my emotions to shake me out of that negative thing, right? So I went running down to, uh, from Palisades, from Will Rogers Beach towards Santa Monica and I got, I passed East Channel and I'm getting towards the Jonathan Club, the Anger House. Uh, and I ran as fast as I could and I was like really trying to like shake that negative thing and I, when I was coming back I started to scream uh, to the <laughs> to the birds, right? <laughs> I'm selling this fucking house to this person. It's gonna happen. I was like yelling like really loud. No, no, there was no one in there, okay? <laughs> it was like 5.30, it was still kind of dark, it was starting to clear up. 
And one of those times I yell so hard, and I, out of the sand, I see this guy gets up. The homeless guy was leaping, he's like, what's wrong with you? I was so mad. <laughs> and so he got me laughing. I was like, oh, sorry. And I started laughing, and I realized in that moment that that fear of what was happening kind of like got completely distracted by that funny thing that happened. And it really changed my energy and the way I was feeling about it. And I was very confident that that was happening. And I ran all the way back to where I started, uh, repeating that thing over and over and over and over again. And I, I jumped in the ocean with, with Danny. That is a friend of mine that I invited to come work here. He doesn't work at the agency, but he's a guest of mine. Uh, we've done crossfit with him, and, uh, and then we've gone in the ocean. And, you know, uh, in the freaking cold, that was cold. We went and he was the only person that wanted to go when it was December, right? And the cold is January. It was so freaking cold, I couldn't feel my toes. But he's a Swiss Army Special Forces guy, so he pushed me to, you know, go through it. So anyway, uh, and when I came back, you know, I had this piece and I jumped in the water, and that just kind of like the cold water got me to get rid of that. And literally, when I got up and I looked up, out, this huge pelican came flying in a very peaceful way, really close to the water, next to me, really close to me, and then it went by. And uh, and I don't know, I mean, I, I tell you that this story was a personal experience, and uh, maybe you relate to that sometimes. Uh, I got out of there, literally, I got in my car, I got to my house, and we were able to move contingencies and close the deal. But like, magic. Like, all of a sudden they didn't want that thing that they wanted, that night it was okay, and we ended up making the sale. And some people will be like, yeah, great, that was crazy, that was going to happen anyway, or whatever. You can believe and you can make out of the stories anything you want, but I choose to believe that you create your own luck. And, uh, you know, I, I, I believe in that, uh, 100%. So, that's the story of the day. Let me read you another thing that... Uh, so I read in a book, and I can't remember where I put this note, and I, you know, sometimes I forget to put the reference of where I see it or who said it, but I'm getting better at that. This is a very early one. And we were in faith plus extraordinary effort, but not just effort. Like, literally, you need to feel that at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whenever you're driving home after work, you really need to feel that you've done today everything that you could have done. Right? You cannot go home in your day thinking, I shouldn't spend one hour looking at Instagram when I could have made 10 more phone calls. You really need to feel that you did everything you could have done that day. And if nothing happens, doesn't matter because you did what you can do and that's all you can control is what you can do. Because if you have that feeling, that's extraordinary effort. It's like, oh, okay, I did everything I could have done today. I put the effort into it and I have a in faith that it's going to happen. And that equals miracles. People call miracles a lot of things that they're not other than someone having faith and working really hard and making it happen, right? So that's that's basically what we need to do. And that's kind of like most of this chapter, unless someone wants to bring any questions or anything. But uh, there is a statement of faith that we can, a uh, self-confidence formula too, that we can, you know, do in our, in our homes. Right? Yes. Um, it goes back to the three different most powerful energies, faith, love, and sex. And it says when they are blended, you have coloring. How do you are you blended? Yeah. Like, is it, I mean, I, I, it's, is it like <clears throat> sex and then feeling it blended? Or I think it's really that. Yeah. All the time. Right. I, I, yes, exactly. I mean, <laughs> Cool, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, uh, what we're referring to that is like <clears throat> love is probably the strongest thing that you feel towards someone, towards yourself, you know, loved one, and through nature, through animals, so anything that you feel love. And it's, it's, it's a, we all agree that's a strong emotion, right? And so is sex. I mean, like, you know, we <coughs> genetically and are made to have sex, and that's how the way how we procreate and everything. So, I mean, I don't want to 
to start giving examples, but uh, <laughs> but we all know it. Let's just leave it like that, okay? We know that if you're sitting in a couch and there's someone that you feel strongly sexual about it, and they walk in there, and you're feeling really tired, and you don't want to do anything, and they come and say, let's have sex, you're going to get up like this, like you, you could run a marathon, but you'll be up and you're ready to go. So that's what it's referring to. There are the strongest emotions, right? Yeah. So what does that mean when they mix? It doesn't mean that you need to be having sex faith and love at the same time all the time, but maybe you can use, you know, and manipulate those feelings in your thought to, to, to you know, to redirect the energy to something. Oh, okay. Okay. Got yes. It. Yeah, so it's the feeling. Yeah. So harnessing the feelings and making yes. meditation like that's what you're trying yes. to go to. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right, I'm going to read this unless someone wants to read it for me. <clears throat> Page 19 of the workbook. Self-confidence formula, auto-suggestion number one. I want someone to read for me the first paragraph. It starts with I know and ends in action. Anyone up for a task? So we can change accents for a little bit? <laughs> you, great, thank you. What's your name again? Sorry. Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Therefore, I demand of myself persistent, continuous action towards its attainment, and I, here and now, promise to render such action. Great. Do you guys connect with that? Seems like super easy and clear to understand, right? Great. Every man is what he is because of the dominating thoughts which he permits to occupy in his mind. Okay. Self-confidence formula, auto-suggestion number two. Who wants to read that one? I realize the dominating thought of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in outward physical action gradually transform themselves into physical reality. Therefore, I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of thinking of the person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental picture of that person. Thank you. So this is like, you know, this is how you start out to suggesting, this is like the, the whole visualization comes into place and in how strong this is because if you add into your life 30 minutes where you are in that, vibration, thinking or visualizing yourself, that person that you want to become in five, ten years from now. And when when I say that person you want to become, it's in every aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Financially, emotionally, physically, where will you be, how will you feel? And you really get deep into the emotions and that's what it talks about. If you mix the faith that you're gonna become that or you're gonna be there with emotions and you can actually cheat your mind that you're feeling that that you were already there. Imagine if you're doing that for 10 or 30 minutes every day compared to not doing it. It's gonna, something is gonna happen. I mean, just out of curiosity, you have to try it, right? That's how I started doing it. When I started, when I bought this book back in 2003 or four, it just sparked this. I was like, oh, I'm gonna test it. I mean, like, what can I lose, right? We have a guy that studied 30 of the biggest minds in the world that is saying that this shit works, I'm like, might as well try it. So I started trying it and testing it and it works. I mean, I gave the example last week that Misha walked into my house and when I used to live in Los Feliz and saw my first vision board that I did, and what do you say? This guy's so horny. <laughs> <laughs> horny, I was. But I worked. So I'll take that. No problem. I'm gonna make a t-shirt for that. I'm horny. I'm horny. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's one more, which is called, I uh, know, two more actually, sorry. Oh, three more. There's three more. Okay, let's go through this. Uh, Self-confidence formula, auto-suggestion number three. I'll read this one, just watch it. I know through the principle of auto-suggestion, any desire that I persistently hold in my mind will eventually <coughs> seek expression through some practical means of attending the object back, the object back of it. Therefore, I will devote 10 minutes daily to demanding of myself the development of self-confidence. Would you hire a real estate agent that is not confident? As a matter of fact, would you hire anyone in any business or career that they're not confident? 
When you go out with a guy or a girl that is not confident. Confidence, I think, is one of the most important things that we as humans can develop. And uh, sometimes it's harder for, for some people than other one, but we all can develop confidence. You know, and you need to find out what is it that you are good, what, what, you know, you know what you're good, what you like, people have must told you sometime, I like it, well, you are this way, you're very good at this or this or that or whatever it is, and you need to grab that and you need to develop yourself to be confident. Because when you're going to go door knocking, when you're going to meet someone, if you, if, they, if you don't present yourself with confidence, then people that just don't feel connected, they don't feel they can trust that you can manage a big asset for them. So self-confidence is very, very important. And a lot of times when I was starting in this business, people told me, well, once you do two deals, your self-confidence is going to kick in and then you're going you're gonna to be better. And it's true, you know, you start and you have another deal, so you're talking to people and, and you just don't feel that like you have that, you know, ability of property to talk about properties, about closing, because you've never gone through an escrow process. So you really have like, I'm just going to stay here quiet and hope everything goes smooth because I don't know shit. <laughs> but if you start learning, right, if you learn the contract, right, if you, if you really understand and read the contract, if you understand your market and you know everything, then you feel confident that no matter what you're going through, they're going to ask you and you're going to say something and you're going to know how to handle it. And if you don't, well, here's your mastermind group that expands into the whole agency where you guys can just call, knock on my door, or anyone that is around here, you know, Billy, I mean, we're always like happy to help, so that will also give you the confidence that you have a team that is backing you on the real estate part, right? And I want to believe that a lot of us feel in this company that you actually have people that you can reach out on a personal level to. Who feels that way? Great. All right, number four. And five. Who wants to do four and who wants to do five? Okay, you do four and you do five. Okay. I have clearly written down the description of my definite chief aim in life, and I will never stop trying until I shall have developed sufficient self confidence for its attainment. Great. So, just gotta make that decision, and uh, as I was telling you in the beginning, you're gonna fail. That's fine. Don't get discouraged. You gotta keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and it will happen. It's, it's, it's proven that that's gonna be what's gonna happen. Yes, bye. I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless built upon truth and justice. Therefore, I will engage in no transaction which does not benefit all whom it affects. I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use and the cooperation of other people. I will induce others to serve me because of my willingness to serve others. Yes. Now this, we're gonna be at points in our career where we're gonna have the choice. And in our life, there's always the easy way, right? There's always the right decision and there's the wrong one, right? And to do the right thing is a lot fucking harder than doing the wrong thing. It's just the way it is, right? That's why people just, Take the easy road because the other one is too hard. So if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. That's kind of how it goes. So if you're gonna take the shortcuts and you're gonna be doing the wrong stuff, yeah, you'll have maybe an instant satisfaction thing, but in the long term, that never comes back. You know, karma is a bitch. We heard that many times. And the reality is, you're gonna be presented in in this business on opportunities what I had before, where. I had a listing, it was not on the market, and I knew the guy next door that was a buyer. I talked to them directly. Uh, another agent that knew them contacted them too. They called me to ask me if I wanted to represent both sides or how would I feel. I told them, look, I feel like if you have a relationship with that person, you should do it with them. And we ended up doing a great transaction. The guy, I mean, I could have said, don't use him, you don't need him or whatever, but uh, you know, you get to that point, it's like, but I, 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 don't, I don't need to do that with that person, right? They have a relationship. Sometimes clients are like that, you know, they put you in the spot and you just need to make the right choice. That's, a, that's one example that just came to my mind, but there's a lot of things that you're gonna have to make. That you cannot engage, like it says in here, on any transaction or anything that does not benefit everybody and has some negative or bad thing in there because that, that makes the formula not, not work. I mean, it's, it's something's gonna go wrong and it's just gonna, you know, 
we have bad techniques. So let's try to do the right thing always. All right, so that's that's for the chapter of faith. Auto suggestion will cover really quick, but I want to take a little pause on, on the faith part of it and see if anyone has any questions. Any more questions regarding this? No? You read all the examples about Lincoln, you know, sometimes in detail before he became who became. No? Well, I don't have a question, but I have a... I have a no, no, no questions. Call me in, so, yeah. So, for years, I was always doing the, um, like, at nighttime, I would do the what I manifest and what I'm grateful for, a booklet, and it really helped me. I did this for years, and I stopped doing it for the last five, six months. And like I said last week, I was like, I'm a little lost right now, of like what I want, being a mom, raising kids, being a really successful age, and like, you know, you're trying to, you know, figure out what it is. And I went back to the last three years of what I wanted, what I want to achieve, and I achieved everything that I wanted, that I was manifesting, except the income. I haven't done that yet, like I've got close. But now I am going back to it, and I already feel this different vibration. Like I can feel like this different energy. And it, it really works. I mean, I, I just, you can, you can feel it. Great, yeah. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> we know that already. But you gotta test it yourselves, because people telling you is different than you experimenting and feeling it, because then the moment that you do it, then you're gonna want to do more, and that's how you do it. But then you're gonna change what you want sometimes. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna change, and you're gonna be like, oh, that goal that I had, I need to adjust it a little bit. I need to change it a little bit. Because if you don't adjust, then it doesn't feel that that's the thing that you want 100% anymore. And because there's not not that connection anymore, then you start falling apart. <coughs> so it's important that you're always checking that. Yeah, maybe that's not gonna help me with my personal life if I really focus on that thing only. Or maybe if I do that, it's not really going to get me. So maybe I need to adjust that a little bit. So it's important that you keep track and you, that's why we do this every year. Maybe I change, maybe I don't need that anymore because I was so set on that. But that's the thing that's not letting me get here. So, you know, always be conscious about it. And just really, just by the fact that we now are conscious about this thing, give it a shot and be more aware when you're driving, when you're talking on the phone and everything, you're gonna always not be aware. I mean, Monique always says, like, every time I'm doing something, I think that Santiago is selling this and he's saying that, because it becomes something that you now are conscious about, it, right? You good? Yeah, no more comments? You believe in, in this? Like, do you really think that faith is a strong emotion? Yeah, all right, cool, I'm glad. All right, let's go to the next one then, auto suggestion. This basically is just how you're gonna develop that faith, right? How you're gonna get your faith to be stronger. And there's a ton of exercises on how can you do that. Uh, speaking yourself, repeating something, incantations, uh, audio books, meditation, anything that you can do to get you to believe that that's gonna happen. Uh, but there is six steps to stimulate your subconscious mind that we're going to go all through those six right now. The first one says, go into some quiet spot, preferably in bed at night. That doesn't work for me. The night part works, the bed part doesn't. As soon as I get in bed, I pass out in 30 seconds. Uh, but a quiet place, ideally for me, sitting straight so you don't get tired and you don't, you know, fall asleep where you will not be disturbed or interrupted. So we talk about one night, one in the morning, right? So your kids are not asking you for stuff, or your wife or husband is not talking to you about something else. It's really a time for yourself. Close your eyes and repeat out loud. So you might hear your own words, the written statement of the amount of money or gold you intend to accumulate, the time limit for its accumulation, and a description of the service or merchandise you intend to give in return of that money. As you carry out these instructions, see yourself already in possession of the money. And when it says you see yourself in the possession of that money, it's because then when you see yourself, then you get emotional about it, and that's when it becomes powerful. For example, suppose that you intend to accumulate $50,000 by the 1st of January. Five years hence that you intended 
to give personal services in return for the money and the capacity of a salesman. Your written statement of your corpus should be similar to the following. By the first day of January 19 of whatever, I will have in my possession $50,000, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during that interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I'm capable of rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of a salesman of real estate. Uh, I believe that I will have this money in my possession, my faith so strong, and I can only, uh, no, I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now awaiting to transfer to me at the, at the time. And in the proportion that I deliver the service I intend to render in return for it, I'm awaiting a plan by which I accumulate this money and I will follow the plan when it's received. Second, repeat this program night and morning until you can see it in your, in your imagination, uh, the money that you can then accumulate. And third, you have to place a written copy of your statement where you can see it at night in the morning. So just write it, put it in your nightstand, or put it in your desk, or in any area you're going to be doing this. And as I told you, by the second month, you're probably going to memorize it so you don't have to read it. I read it because I believe that by looking at it also has something in there, so I read it. Uh, we talked about this last week, you said to start doing it. Who started doing this? Really? <laughs> <laughs> like really, who start doing this every morning and every night? Let's start by that, by the hard one. Every morning and every night, who's been reading this out loud? Okay. Who's been doing it only in the morning or only at night? Okay. Cool. I mean, it's a lot more people than what I thought. <laughs> because honestly, I mean, I can I can tell you I've done this talks to with Steve Scholl at the, at the Skirball Center, you know, and they, there's a lot of realtors that come from different places, and uh, and there's always, always one person that raises the hand and is like, that's great, but now, would you mind sharing the secret? How do you really do it? I'm like, I just told you. <laughs> you know? I told you exactly what I do, and that's it. There's not really a secret, you know? It's, it's, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, right? There can be two ice cream shops next to each other, and one does really well and the other one doesn't. It's not because, you know, any other thing that someone is doing their job better, putting more time or effort and really into the ice cream that tastes really care more, they put that energy out there, they have music, it looks better, you walk in there and you feel good. The other one, you walk in, there's someone that barely says hello to you, there's, there's no love into it, so that's basically, you know, how things are. So. There's no secret, and the thing is, like, I tell them, I'm like, look, I'll tell you one more time what the secret is, and I'll tell you exactly what I do, and we're going to come back three months from now, all of us here, and if five of out of the 200 in this room are doing it, I'll be shocked, because it's the execution when everybody drops the ball, you know, so let's be more doers than thinkers. Thinking is great. I'm going to manage to learn how to think what we want on everything, but that's going to end right there if you don't actually take and do, right? You sit on your couch and you just think about all the beautiful things and meditate all day long and visualize how great it's going to be and you don't do anything, well, they're going to come and kick you out of your house and take your couch. <laughs> Literally. But if you do that in the morning, you do that at night, and in between, you're busting, you're, you know, working out there and you're door knocking and you're calling and you're doing the best you can every day, then the mix of those two things is going to get you to get it done. Okay? Every adversity, every failure, and every heartache carries with it the seed of equivalent or greater benefit. Okay. Anything else that you guys want to add into that? No? You know, we were talking to some of the women of the room mm -hmm. after the um, last classes. I think for us, um, for those of us that are moms, juggling a career, juggling kids' schedules, you know, I'm training for a marathon right now. Like, wow. there's so many excuses. Um, I was in a really good habit last year of doing this, and something as simple like, Doug, get up earlier. And it's like, because like when the alarm goes off, like I'm, I'm off all day. And just the practice of me getting up, 
getting up at 5.15 and doing my meditation for 15 minutes, then I'm working out before my kids are even out. And it's just like you said, it becomes like a muscle when you keep doing it. My day doesn't feel right if I don't follow that. But something like that was just a little tweak that's just made all of this, you know, flow so much better that I do, I, I feel off if I don't get all my mm -hmm. stuff in. So it's it really like I had every excuse to really not I don't have time for that in the morning. Like, how do I find quiet time? Like, and we talked about it as moms being meeting once a month and being accountability partners. And, right. And you know, not letting our kids distract us. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> and, <right. laughs> or ourselves believe that they're distracting us. Right. Yeah, no, you guys can support each other for sure. But yeah, you can see again the mind's gonna try to protect you. Right? For survival. But guess what? We're not living in the time of dinosaurs where we need to like survive. Like before years ago, you know, you would, you know, your mind is carrying these through years where you can you know, hide in a cave, you're in survival mode the whole time. But thank God we don't have to do that all the time, but your mind continues to trigger that protecting you from everything. So when we walk into the ocean and you get really close at five in the morning in January and you touch the water. Everything in your body is giving you amazing reasons why not to get in. <laughs> like it's, you know, and that when you're, when, you're, when you're conscious about it, I laugh sometimes. Like, I, I, it's fucking amazing how many excuses I can come up with so fast, you know? Anything comes in my mind, like your car is warmer, you don't need to do this, you already ran, you already turned the calories, you did this, you don't need, like everything. So at that moment is when you need to tell your mind who is the boss. And it's like, it's cold and all these things don't matter because I'm gonna get in here if I command you to get into that cold water. And that's why I jump in the ocean. It's not other than, well, there's health benefits too, but uh, it's to show that I'm gonna make my decisions and I'm gonna carry through. And it's not my mind that is gonna walk me out of my goals or, or what I wanna do. And that, you know, that has a meaning. When you do that, you're telling something to yourself, your subconscious mind that, you're gonna get it done no matter what. If you need to jump in the cold water, you do it and then you send that message in the back. So then when you go into your life and things happen, your subconscious mind says, oh, this fucker is gonna do it. You know, I know he's gonna do it. He says he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. Yes. I've always heard you like say, you know, I know that for my 42nd birthday, I know it's gonna to be to my left, it's gonna to be to my right, you know, and uh, uh, like there's like this clarity of like your vision and how you feel, you know, that when you go into that moment, when you feel what you see. And you know, I've always like, you know, I've always been pretty good about like, you know, writing, visualizing all of this stuff, and then, you know, like, with, and working with Steve Scholl, he's like, you know, you gotta be more detailed, like, what do you really want? Super detailed. And, uh, you know, so I've been working on that, is, like, as far as even, like, researching, like, okay, where is this cafe that I'm gonna be at, or this place that I'm gonna be at, what am I looking at, what does the sunrise look like, or things like that. What's um, the menu? Exactly. What are you wearing? Like I've been researching and you know, and writing and taking my time and really, like, you know, writing what I, that particular day is looking like and feeling like, and I'm, I'm seeing just a big difference on like that mix of that big, you know, like those emotions, you know, because I feel like I'm really there. So, you know, thank you for that. I finally got it. <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, it really is fun because what's your favorite wine? What's your favorite champagne? What's your favorite meal? What's your favorite style of house? What's your favorite view? I mean, anything that is your favorite thing, well, why don't just visualize that? Because those are the things that get you the most excited, right? Don't think about, I'm gonna be driving this car if it doesn't get you excited. Think about what's actually gonna get you excited because that's gonna get you emotional about it and it's gonna get you in that mood, you know? So, and then what happens is, you know, again, the mind is gonna try to mess with you. So sometimes I was thinking like, I wanna be with this person here and this person here, and my mind's like, well, that person is getting older, why is they not there? And then you start thinking on what, you know, because life happens, and then you start going into that, and it becomes from something really good and things, so you need to catch yourself and be like, no, because every thought is a creation, right? So every time you start going in that direction, that's, that thing starts to become something, and the more you feed it, you know, it'll become that. So you need to catch yourself and just 
go to the other side and say, no, that's not gonna happen, and I'm not even gonna think about that. Let's focus again on the champagne that I'm drinking. That's an example, you know? So it's super important that you're very detailed, and the moment your mind start wondering if something could go wrong that night, or the reason why you don't think you're gonna get there, just switch it with something else that gets you excited again, and, and kind of do that exercise until you get good at it. And even at the moment, right? I, I know that, like, for example, at a wedding, like, something could go wrong. If the bride will go, this is happening, or it didn't happen, but you gotta switch it, like, even whatever you're doing at that moment, like, okay, but look at everything else, you know? Yeah. Because that could just ruin the night or make it, okay, it's okay, everything else is great. Yeah. And even, like, for real estate, like, for what we do, I think that what one of the most important things that makes you successful in this business is having the ability to move on for the deals that they don't happen, right? An escrow doesn't go through, you invested so much time and it was so difficult and you're almost there and they didn't happen, right? That's a Monday. Two weeks later, you continue talking about it and you continue to like, oh, I, I, I already put a down payment for something with counting on that money. I already, you know, you had all these ideas and you continue to go back to feel that horrible feeling of falling out of escrow and you just get stuck into that thing. But if you sucks, you get upset for a little bit and then you move on and don't think about it. It didn't happen, it didn't happen. You just move on. I mean, gripping, Laura know how I like that. How many escrows in the last two years have been like, a lot of escrows didn't happen and just move the next one to the next one to the next one. If you have the ability to move faster, then try it. It really, really helps. Okay, we're almost done. So if you get questions, talk now. If not, save it for next week. <laughs> it should be a great reason to save it though. <clears throat> You're good? Yeah, no more questions, no more comments. If you feel good about these chapters. Let's go and do our exercises. We're gonna cover the two next chapters next next week, which is specialized knowledge, which gets very interesting. We're gonna talk about what we do, right? Uh, and then uh, and then imagination, which is awesome. And the, in the imagination chapter, we're gonna do the, as an exercise the vision boards. And if you want to start doing them, I mean, it's so much fun. I mean, I remember with Kyle uh, back in two thousand and five or four when we did that together. It was New Year's Eve, and we didn't really have any plans. We didn't have money to go anywhere. So we decided to go to Ralph's and buy 20 magazines, a bottle of champagne, and we went home and we drank champagne, listening to music, cutting and making vision boards, the one that you saw. Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, make it fun. You know, make a date out of it or make a date yourself. You know, go in your house, put some nice music, buy your favorite drink or food or something, and just use the world as your catalog and start cutting things, pictures of, you know, a family or pictures of uh, a couple in the sunset or uh, words, right? Faith, uh, whatever that inspire you, not only material things, right? And just mix them all together. I mean, I do this big, I go to one of those frame stores and I buy like a big frame and I stack a bunch of stuff in big pictures so it's easy to see. You don't want to do it small, like, like here in this book is, is, is this, right? Like how many pictures can you fit in there? So, uh, so you want to do it big and also you need to open the book to look at it. In my house, when I walk to my, to my master, I have my office and it's right there. So when I get home, I see it. When I wake up, I see it. When I go to bed, I see it. It's there. And even though I'm not consciously looking at it because you know you become used to like that picture over there you know you don't just you don't see it every day so I'm the time, right? but you know that it's there and you just see it your subconscious mind is looking at it and it's getting printed in there so that's why we do the vision and and i did it because of you a couple years ago with my kids and i do it every Fine. year and they it was harder with the boys <laughs> to get them to do it than the girls were all into it but it was so it's i mean they loved it and now everyone who's over my nephews or Friends, I'm like, you're doing a vision board, and it's great. Yeah. It's right next to your Yeah, it's great. All right. Cool. And mm -hmm. one more thing. If you're sitting open house this weekend, and it happens to be a house that you like, and that you like to own, use, I'm telling you, that's so powerful. Just pretend, well, people are not there, of course, <laughs> but that's your house. Like, here, you pretend you the kitchen, you know, imagine that you're walking in there, you're waking up, I'm going to do my meditations in 
dark corners, sitting there, because you are sitting there anyway, and in between people coming, maybe it's quiet for 10, 15 minutes, use that time to do it. So it's a matter of using your time wisely, like read a book, that's a great thing. But since we're doing this, just start testing all these little things, and I did it, and it was great, and I, I did it in a lot of houses. But uh, anyway. Thank you for coming, this was fun. I'm glad that it was still a lot of us. I hope to see you all next Friday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.